Um, this is a poem that I'd like to read because you're, um, everybody here um, is who I consider my family and friends. It's lovers of poetry. And how many people can you meet like that? And so this is a poem that I often tell my students when you start a poem, imagine your ideal reader. Imagine who you're writing that poem to. And I actually wrote this poem to every single one of you in this room. It's called Friends. Friends. Friends, this is the viscous heart I hide from you. Gnashing, polluted, hooked to my ribs like a burr, stuck there and stinging, and it's only 4.14 in the morning. Those sudden shudders, my waking alarm, then the daily discipline of shutting away that heart, shambling through the house, touching things, stroking their shapes, as if it could help me not be the bad sower's daughter each morning, a pit from the seed he sowed and left to parch, and no crows would feed from it. So I lived. But I don't want to explain this further. I'm done with that. But this is for you. On the days I hold your books, read your letters, recall a gaze, the delicate dangle of an earring, or the throwing back of a head in laughter, it's you seeding the first beat into the heart I do open. And as the sun heaves daylight into the parched tree by my window, and rats burrow away when pigeons come down to feed on dust and pizza crusts. I thrum the lit syllables of your names on my sill with all ten fingers, typing them firmly into the brick and counting their beats, counting their beats. <clears throat> um, I don't know if some of you were at the event of, of uh, Charles Simic, and I, uh, during which I said I'm, I'm not from Texas, um, <laughs> um, and I'm not from Texas. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I loved when I was learning English is to learn those new idioms and things people say. And once I heard somebody say, oh, she sold it for a song. <laughs> Sold it for a song. So you mean, here, I'll give you my piece of cake if you sing a song? <laughs> I mean, beautiful. So I wrote a poem about that. <clears throat> it's called Garage Sale. I sold her bed for a song. A song of yearning like an orphan's. Or the one knives carve into bread. But the unbroken bread song, too. For the song that a river sings to the ferryman's oars with that dread in it. For a threadbare tune, garroted, chest choked, cheap, a sparrow's, a beggar's, a foghorn's call. For the kind of song only morning can slap on love-stained sheets. That's what I sold my mother's bed for, the one she died in. I sold it for a song. Oh, yeah. And this is my last poem because I'm anxious to hear other people read. So I'm not going to read much more. This poem um, is, I, I live in New York, and my writing room window faces 73 windows. I mean, I've counted them if I don't move. There's more if I move this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of my dear friends, poet Mick Carney, lives in New Hampshire where she sees fields and woods and things. And I wrote that poem for her. She's here, actually. So this is for you, Meg. Read Meg Carney's work. Okay. Night. Lights go off one by one in buildings across the street. There's something solemn about this. 
the lone drone of cars and cabs, an urban lullaby to shut windows. Pull the sheet over this day, subway driver, Torah reader, birthday girl, pimp. Pull the sheet, soldier's mother, corpse dresser, drunk man's bride. Sleep, my daughter. Sleep, my son. And sleep, Jeremiah Smith, the newborn my son delivered in a charity ward today. Sleep. Wrap a wing around the orphan, the hungry woman, the caged man. Shut your eyes, face your walls, the scythe's blade is tilting toward the earth, so sleep for the one who knows horror, or the one who dares speak in any God's name. And don't listen to the clockmaker. He's setting the alarm. Sleep until it rings. Sleep toward the waking and the windowless nights. Thank you.